oh God, that take me and make me an instrument of your peace and love amongst the people of this land. For Christ's sake, Amen. to have this warm welcome in Port of Spain to when you're welcoming your new bishop because I've known him for 20 years he's a very old friend and it's a tremendous privilege to be here when he's just going to be made a bishop I knew him first when he came to uh, Trinity College in Toronto when he wasn't quite sure whether he was going to be a doctor or a clergyman and uh, he decided there that he was going to study for the Christian ministry. He came to Trinity College in Toronto, which has a faculty of divinity, which is part of that university. Well, I left here in 1946, so that puts it certainly 24 years. 24 years? Yes. It's a long time. It what is. What have you been doing during that time? Well, I entered the University of Pennsylvania first, and then afterwards went to the University of Toronto and did theology. It was at Penn that I did arts and sciences. Pennsylvania? Yes, that's right. And then what happened to your career after that? Well, at Toronto, towards the end of my course in theology, uh, I offered myself as a candidate for holy orders. In fact, I wrote the Bishop of Trinidad, uh, but afterwards was ordained deacon for Jamaica. I see. How did you enjoy your stay in Jamaica? Well, I had uh, a marvelous experience. At first, I was a curate in a city parish, and then spent nine or ten years in a rural area. And actually, it's from the city that I've come. Well, that's very good. Let us welcome you to Trinidad, and we are all looking forward very much to your consecration and enthronement ceremonies later this month. Thank you very much. It's a tremendous experience, and I'm looking forward to it. He was elected uh, president of the student body while he was with us, and um, gained a tremendous amount of respect from his fellow students. And they knew perfectly well 20 years ago that uh, Clive Abdullah was going to be a leader in the church. So it's uh, great to be here and see this all now happening. Um, then at the end of his career at Trinity College, uh, he was married, so that I've known uh, Mrs. Abdullah for almost as long as I've known her husband. She was a graduate of the University of Western Ontario, and then she was also a graduate in social work of the University of Toronto and she worked there for one of our big social agencies where she became a very well-known expert for um, dealing with a particular kind of very very disturbed child and I think it's one of the most interesting things about this whole operation that um, not only are you getting a new bishop who's one of your own but you're also getting a very distinguished uh, woman in the person of his wife who is herself a professional and um, a, a very highly honored professional. I hope we'll have uh, more people like him to work on some of our problems in Canada. We could certainly do with them. I know his loss to Jamaica has been immense. I've just come from Jamaica and I met any number of people in the church there who were wondering how they were going to get along without him, but I'm quite sure they will. They will. I think one of the special gifts that your new bishop brings is a tremendous uh, friendliness. He gets on easily with all sorts of people. I said before that he'd been made president of the student body when he was at college, and I think it was because they recognized that he had this gift which, of course, he shares with his wife. Uh, they're both immensely friendly people. I'm told in Trinidad that you have uh, a great many social problems. I know very little about them, but I don't think they can be very much worse than the ones we have in Canada. And uh, it's people who have a great gift of friendship, as well as a good mind, who are needed to deal with these problems. I, th I think this all this general and generous, outgoing, cheerful character, um, this has a great deal to contribute to um, any 
society, not just developing societies, but, uh, but even old ones. The new bishop is a theologian. I think the most important thing I would say is simply that he is a man of the modern world. He's a graduate of a modern university. He's a graduate in theology of a modern school. He's familiar with what uh, modern theologians are talking about. He's familiar with the um, new theological interest in uh, social affairs all the various uh, strains and stresses of contemporary society, which the church is doing a great deal about, and a great many books are written about this. Uh, nobody has time to read all the books, but the point is that he's, he, he belongs to this world. He, uh, he's a man of the modern world who um, is familiar with these movements, I think, from the ground up. And has had a pretty good experience of uh, seeing them in uh, not only here, but also in Jamaica, and then before that, of course, in Canada and the United States, where we've got our share of uh, problems. After Rosary, I went to QRC, and at QRC, um, I got into the cadets and the Boy Scouts. We had an Air Scout troop there in those days, and uh, the principal then was um, Archdeacon Dolly. The boys at QRC rebelled against uh, certain aspects of colonialism. I remember there was um, a famous visitor, a member of the royal family, paying a visit to Trinidad and he was to drive past the savannah, and we were to stand on the balcony of QRC and cheer. We booed instead, and uh, we were um, put in detention for such display of discourtesy. Father Peeling, say grace for us, please. O oh Lord, bless this food to our use, ourselves to thy service, and our fellowship to the service of mankind. Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, now it seems to me that you can uh, cut that magnificent piece of meat. Well, I've got to put quite a bit of pressure on it. <laughs> that book is written by a woman. Yes, indeed. Uh, Hannah Arendt is a very distinguished modern philosopher who has written a number of books on contemporary political and social affairs. And this one is the examination of the meaning of power, authority, violence, mostly the examination of the idea of power. And it's the only serious criticism that uh, I happen to have read of Fanon's book, The Wretched of the Earth, which is, of course, almost a textbook of the Third World Revolution. The various revolutionary movements in Africa, the Caribbean, and so on, Fanon's Wretched of the Earth is the book that all the revolutionary scholars are reading, and uh, Hannah Arendt offers a very serious, excellent examination of the argument.
sanctify thy hands in the office to which thou hast been called in the church of God. For behold, the Lord hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. O God, the protector of all that trust in thee, vouchsafe to bless this pastoral staff and grant that what it signifies to us may be fulfilled by him who bears it to thy honour and glory and for the benefit of thy holy church through Jesus Christ our Lord. Receive this pastoral staff and be zealous and strong in correcting vice. Meet out justice without rancor. Feed the souls of thy flock with wholesome doctrine. And let not the love of ease cause thee to neglect the sacred duties of thy high office. Amen. Pour forth thy blessing upon this ring. And grant that all who shall acknowledge this sign of our holy faith may be filled with the power of thy heavenly grace and ever remain in the unity of thy church through Jesus Christ our Lord. Receive this ring, the symbol of faith, and be thou adorned with faith undefiled and be thou a faithful guardian of holy church the bride of Christ. There are two things that uh, come to my mind. First, there is the thrill of being in a position of leadership at this time in our history, and the enthusiasm of the whole service and the joy of the people around. This makes me feel supported and, and strong to go forward. At the same time, I feel inadequate for the task because I know that unless God and the whole church and others are around I will not do the job that is required at this time. I don't feel however that this is anything unusual because uh, the Bible is full of prophets and the stories of their lives and leaders who go through this uh, dual sense of responsibility as well as inadequacy, beginning from Abraham right down through even our Lord himself in the Garden of Gethsemane and in other times, this, this duality. And uh, I, I feel one in the sense that others have gone through this similar experience. The ring, which is the symbol of the bishop's office and the symbol of the faith and of the unity of the Catholic Church. Ormondson Abdullah, by divine permission, Lord Bishop of Trinidad and Tobago, 
having been duly elected and confirmed, make our request of you, very reverend brother, that we be conducted to the bishop's seat in our cathedral church of the Holy Trinity, Trinidad, there to be inducted, installed and enthroned according to ancient usage and prescriptive rite. We, Alfred Duke Beastman Harrison, Dean of this Cathedral Church of Trinidad, by and with the consent of our brethren, the members of the chapter of the Diocese of Trinidad, here present, being well assured that all things necessary to the assumption of your Episcopal rights and duties have been lawfully accomplished, do with all dutiful obedience welcome you to our cathedral church and decree to proceed forthwith to the solemn rites and ceremonies with which your enthronement shall be conducted. We do by these presents proclaim him the said Clive Ormiston Abdallah to be Lord Bishop of the said See and Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago. And we do hereby call upon you the said Alfred II Priestman Harrison and upon the whole clergy and laity of the church and the said diocese and jurisdiction to receive him, the said Clive Ormiston Abdallah as your true and undoubted bishop and father in God. Good people, we here declare unto you that the enthronement of Clive Ormonston Abdallah by divine permission, Lord Bishop of Trinidad and Tobago is now duly and fully accomplished. <laughs> and my Lord Bishop, in the name of your people, I bid you welcome as our true and undoubted Bishop. For gladness whereof shall be sung the hymn, Te Diem, Lord Amos, we praise thee, O God, this is the church which nurtured me in the Anglican tradition. This is the church which holds many happy memories for me, especially during the days of the late Dean Holt, when I was a choir boy here. But this sense of history brings with it as well a great sense of responsibility. To begin with, I'm very much aware of the fact that today I am bishop, not of a few within the diocese, but of all. And I want to assure the whole diocese that I shall do my very best to exercise the responsibilities of my office to one and all alike. For this, I shall need the support of your prayer. Well, 
I would um, like to put forward to the young men, especially in Trinidad, uh, to think of the church as a very exciting arena for ministry. In times past, you know, we had pictures of uh, clergymen as very wishy-washy people who have no guts. Well, in today's world, I think that it calls for, and I hope that we will be able to offer this to young Trinidadians, an opportunity for gut service. And I have found the ministry to be one of the most exciting that one can, can do in these exciting days. And I would invite young men to come forward in this way and help us in this great work. Thank you very much. Thy holy spirit more and more until they come unto thine everlasting peace. 